Hey everyone, how's it going? I wanted to show you a quick video about how you can take any function in JavaScript that follows the callback approach and convert it into one that uses promises and therefore one that you can use async await with, which I think is a much better sort of API to work with than the old callback way, which uh, can lead to the, the Christmas tree or callback hell. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. We're going to be looking at the geolocation get current position function uh, in the browser that's a, that uses callbacks. And this is sort of the what we're producing here, sort of the position, latitude, and longitude of me. So let's take a look at the code. We've got a create React app, which I haven't really changed much about. Uh, we've and we're we've got an app component that we're working with. So let me just give you a quick overview of what's in here, and then we'll start converting this into uh, promises and async await. We've got a constructor that sets some default state to latitude and longitude. We're using one of the React lifecycle functions, component did mount. And uh, what this will do is basically make sure that the browser uh, supports geolocation, and if it does, we'll call load position. So load position uses the navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition function. And how does this function work? It works by passing two different callbacks and some options here below, which we're just leaving as an empty object. So the first callback will get called if things are successful. We can find the position of the person. What we are given is the position. And we can use that to basically extract out the coordinates which give us the latitude and longitude. And we can use that to update the state in our React component, setting it here. The second callback is basically what to call when things go wrong, when we can't find the position or there's an error of some sort. So we're just going to log the console, error getting geolocation. Render function down here is pretty straightforward. Uh, we are simply displaying the latitude and longitude which are found inside of the state. So if we refresh the page here, they're empty at the beginning as it's looking up my current position. And as soon as we have it, it's filling it in with that set state call. All right, so let's start converting this into a promise async await style function. What we're gonna do is create a new get current position function. It will be an arrow function here. And we're going to be basically taking this and moving it up here and converting it into one that uh, returns a promise. So if we look at this here, we have a callback on success, a callback on failure, and some options. Let's just get options out of the way first. We're going to pass options when we call this function, but often we're just going to leave it blank. So let's give it a default value of an empty object. So when we don't pass that, it will just fill it in for us as an empty object. So the way that promises work, um, and therefore async await, is that we need to return a new promise. Okay, so what do we pass to our promise? We pass a function, which is going to receive two parameters, one that we can call accept and one that is reject. And basically, these are two functions that we can call. One for when things work out, accept, and another one when there's an error uh, called reject. And you can see that it's already starting to mirror the callback way down here, where there were two functions that get called, one on success and one on failure. So what we can do is start taking this code and putting it up in here. So we're going to call uh, geolocation to dot get current position. And remember that it takes three parameters. The first is a function when things work. So we will simply pass on our accept function here. Second was a function when things go bad. So this will be our reject function of the promise. And the third were the options which we have in a variable now which came from uh, the arguments of this function here. And we'll simply save that. So that is all we need to do, but let's see how we can use that. So let's just delete this code here and we'll start to use our new promisified geolocation.getCurrentPosition function. So we've got to call it. 
get current position. Uh, we don't need to pass any options because there's a default. So because this is using a promise, we could use the dot then, which in this case will give us our position. And we can do something with it. And we can catch our error if things go bad. So we'll, we'll just log out um, the error message, whatever it, it gives us. We could even just say, um, error, error, and whatever is in that uh, variable here. Just save it and uh, Prettier will format things for me. So this is fine. I don't really know if it's improved much because we still have essentially two functions here. And I don't think this reads really that much nicer than the callback. Maybe a little bit, but um, in here is where you would do uh, um, the latitude and longitude. Longitude is taken from the position dot chords, and then we set the state uh, with latitude and longitude like that. Let's just load the page and make sure things actually work. So I'll refresh it here. Um, it's blank, and it gets filled in. Great. So things are still working, but I wanted to not use promises. Well, we're going to use promises, but I didn't want to use the then and catch way. I wanted to use the async await way. So let's just keep that below as a reference. And what we're going to do is we are going to, um, we're going to say that we're saying const position equals, we are going to await the current position like this. So, when that position comes back, we can then extract the latitude and longitude from it and set the state. Uh, this is sort of a half-baked solution. It wouldn't work yet. And now the first thing is, as soon as you use await, you need to make your function async. Otherwise, it will give you an error. Anytime you want to use await, the function that you're using it in must be async. Second thing is that we haven't dealt with what do we do if there's an error? For that, we can wrap a try catch around it. So we'll take this code and put it in the try. Just um, indent things properly. And we will catch the error. And then we'll simply log it like we were doing before. Now I can clean up the old code. And it has been refactored to use async await. And I'll go over this code in one sec. Just let's make sure it works. Refresh. Loading. And there we go. Position. So how does this code work? Well, basically, we are calling a function which now returns a promise. And at any time you're dealing with a promise, instead of using dot then, you can use this new keyword await which to me reads a lot straightforward, sort of top to bottom like we're used to with um, most programming languages other than JavaScript. So we're gonna say that the position is equal to, let's await for the current position. And then we can do our typical stuff, um, extract the latitude and longitude out from the position's coordinates and set state. But remember, we also have to deal with what happens if things screw up. So for that, we use a catch here. So essentially, this portion of the code is what happens when we call the accept function of our promise. Um, and then this portion of the code is what happens if the reject function gets called. Well, that's it for today. That's how you can take um, any sort of function that uses the callback signature and convert it into one that uses promises. And once you have promises, you can use async await. Thank you very much. Um, have a great day.